Hi guys, this is a video I'm making to review and demonstrate the blast effects system for E11 blasters and others. Um, made by Mr. Paul Whitrow. I hope I'm not butchering that Paul. Who is also responsible for blast effects and the Trooper Ant system, which is awesome. You guys should check that out if you don't use one. You can be a whole range of different Star Wars cosplay characters, not just stormtroopers. Um, so I wanted to show this because it's unusual to try and put one of these systems in the Shepperton Studio 11 blaster and I encountered a few problems and overcame a few problems it wasn't too difficult but it wasn't as easy as a 3d printed hollow build or a rubies or something like that so I got two blasters here I bought another blaster to do this with because I wasn't sure if it was going to be possible thankfully it was so I'm going to show you the techniques that I had to use and some of the tools so your main cut lines because this is all resin cast most of this is resin cast pieces they're solid these are solid these guys are solid the sights are solid only the main tube is hollow um, so you have to make quite radical adjustments you can unscrew several screws around the piece itself and they do they do structurally hold things on but there is also cyanoacrylate super glue holding this stuff together as well so once you've undone all those screws you kind of have to wobble everything and pull it about and it will it will shatter off it's it's nerve-wracking but it works um, this will then expose the bottom of the weapon these can be pulled out in the same way I've glued mine in now but originally they were quite loose and you could pop them out so I take this detail off I took all of the side off I took the side off I took the lower receiver and the handle unit off. Um, I also sliced off the back here so that I'm ending up with a tube which I can then slice along those lines all the way back to open the tube up in half so that I can get inside it. This is packed with EVA foam of some sort on the inside. I took this piece off and I put aluminium foil over the top of that to make it a more convincing a more convincing metallic effect I hope you can see that there um, the only difference from standard on this the other the other difference from standard on this one is um, actually it's on the other one I 3d printed the lens which I'll 3d print to go in here um, at a later date uh, now don't once you've got this thing open laying out the electronics in it was quite easy um, I've actually put a light diffuser down the barrel and the way I did that was on the, on the new version Paul has provided a neopixel strip um, which gives you that lovely barrel effect um, the way I've dissipated that light inside was an ordinary glue stick for a hot glue gun um, about yay long I sliced it in half and actually hot glued it onto the neopixel strip and it makes, it makes a really nice diffusion effect all the way around the weapon and it's you know 10 pence worth nothing this bit broken off it already had the hole through it which allows me to allows me to put the extra bright led in behind that and hot glue that in place with a little cyanocrylate and milliput just to be on the safe side um, the box here where you can see the counter the counter of ammo counter detail Um, this piece is all solid so this was sliced using a Dremel quick change um, cutter one of these puppies they're excellent one of these will do the whole job I, I didn't have to use any other tool except a little drill for making a hole here and there the same tool was used for hollowing out the space in the trigger because the whole lower receiver area is also a solid cast piece so that has to be hollowed out um, I made my own trigger by using the old trigger as a template and cutting it out of um, four millimeter, four millimeter um, that's ABS sheet, um, easily enough to obtain, cheap and really strong. And then I just did a bit of a carving job on it using the drum on a sander, sander drum. Um, this piece is the only non-stock piece. I cut this off the back of an old ruby, cheap and cheerful. Um, if you give me a moment, I'll demonstrate that. One of these guys that you can get from Amazon for about 
10 or 11 pounds sometimes sometimes a bit cheaper sometimes a little more but not too expensive I cut the ammo box off of that which leaves a hole behind for all the all the wires to come out of and hide underneath underneath the sight bridge here um, and then I drilled holes in that using the Dremel again I cut a hole in the back using slight combination of slice and, and drill um, so that we can see through there and these little this little knob and this little plate I actually cut off the original model and recycled, recycled those back onto here um, it's approximately the same size there's a very slight difference and at first glance it looks pretty stock so I'm not too worried about that um, the other change I made in the back here I made a little milliput d-ring there because I got sick and tired of trying to find the real thing um, the charger is in there in a block of milliput so it can't move so it's easy to get the charging plug into there this pops off the back with a couple of just regular clothing fixing studs here um, and this, the opposite on here and then I've milliputted round so that it just clicks on and stays on under normal use it's pretty robust uh, but it's easy to get to as well there is a little hidden hole here drilled in through to the circuit board so that I can see the red light and the blue light and I filled that in with uh, heat glue heat gun glue and then sanded it off so that you can see the glow you can tell whether it's charging but when it's not lit up at all you can't tell anything's there really it just looks like more gunge on the gun um, and now to the features we can see a really nice view of the targeting computer in there inside the site and we've got our working countdown I have my little button on the outside here because I wasn't too concerned about hiding that it just looks like a nerny so we can change our modes one more time and then we see the blue light up effect of that one So I had a bit of a, let's say, avant-garde choice about where to put the switch in this. And I put it underneath the receiver because I was already carving it about a fair bit. Um, so what I did was take a sanding drum and as you can see I just sanded in at 45 degrees to make this nice curve here. Um, my on off switch fits nicely in there, it can just be reached by a finger and pulled back and forward as necessary. And of course we have the countdown. When that reaches, I won't put you through this. I'll just I'm gonna do a bit now and then we're gonna spin the video on. I'm gonna take it down to where it empties. So we even have the out of ammo feature on that and the sound effect for it. Um, so that's my review of the excellent blast effects. It was easy to fit. Um, you'll find other demos of people fitting in various other rifles. I just wanted to show how a slightly more complex modification and build could be done. So thanks for watching. Have fun. Get making these.